Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for those songs that possess emotionally resonant and powerful instances of vocal harmony. Number 20, Release Me, Wilson Phillips. I don't want to give up a baby, it's time I had to feed on the ground. Hold On may be the better known single from Wilson Phillips' debut album from 1990, but don't sleep on this song. Release Me features wonderful triple harmonies from all the members of Wilson Phillips, which is no mean feat. The song also boasts that polished production style that was so indicative of the late 80s and early 90s. This slickness allows those aforementioned harmonies to shine brightly above the restrained musical arrangements. The end results highlight the talents of China Phillips, Carney Wilson, and her sister Wendy, making Release Me a tour de force of vocal-oriented pop rock. Then, baby, you just got to release me. Number 19, Eternal Flame, The Bangles. Say my name. The, rain. the songwriting process can be approached in myriad ways. Susanna Hoffs collaborated with compositional pros Tom Kelly and Billy Steinberg for this hit with her group The Bangles. This group effort mentality also applies to the song's arrangements, which allow for evocative, almost gothic backing harmonies to Hoffs' lead vocal. I believe it's meant to be Eternal Flame is relatively sparse with regard to instrumentation, and this space allows the Bangles to truly work as a team. Hoffs carries the main melody, but the backing harmonies that begin with Close Your Eyes lift up Eternal Flame to a place of pop ballad perfection. Number 18, I'll Never Find Another You, The Seekers. The 1960s was a wondrous time for fans of folk music. There was a significant crossover with regard to the pop realm, allowing for artists like Australia's The Seekers to see chart success. I'll Never Find Another You is one of the group's best songs thanks largely to the crazy amount of vocal talent on display. When I walk through the stars, you'll be my guide, be my guide. Folk music's intrinsically intimate and minimalist approach allows the quadruple vocal attack of Judith Durham, Athel Guy, Keith Potker, and Bruce Woodley to shine. There's a marked melancholy tinge to the song, as well as a time capsule sentiment that makes I'll Never Find Another You feel forever locked in a dance with the decade in which it was recorded. I don't know what I'll do, but I know I'll never find. Number 17, More Than Words, Extreme. Say I love you is not the words I want to the world of glam metal may not exactly be the place where one might seek out a tender acoustic ballad. Yet here we are with Extremes More Than Words, a massive crossover hit for this Boston-based group of hard rockers. The band's rhythm section has nothing to do here, and they even poke gentle fun at this during the song's music video. Yup, More Than Words is all about the performance of guitarist Nuno Betancourt and singer Gary Sharon, as the pair harmonize with a laser focus. More than words is all you have to do. Betancourt's restrained plucking carries a relaxed groove, as he locks in with Sharon's powerful lead vocal. It ends up sounding like gangbusters. Number 16, Helplessly Hoping, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Helplessly hoping her harlequin hovers nearby. There are a number of vocal groups out there, particularly from the 1960s, that have become synonymous with this ability to really nail a vocal harmony. Crosby, Stills, and Nash certainly fit within this category, as evidenced by this single from 1969. Helplessly Hoping is a song where the triple vocal harmonies are crafted to work together with the song's alliterative lyrics. It's a relatively simple relationship song on the surface, but more research and a deeper listen will reveal just how high the level of complexity is here with CSN. They are for each other. 
Number 15, Don't Let Go Love, in Vogue. speaks volumes to the collective talents of En Vogue that they've managed to stand so tall within the crowded field of vocal R&B. There have been a lot of genre-defining girl groups out there, yet Don't Let Go Love is still such a dizzyingly awesome listen years on since its 1996 release. The warm production gives the guitar and drum accompaniment a funky rock feeling that serves up great contrast to En Vogue's vocal power. Subtlety is largely eschewed here on Don't Let Go in favor of raw emotion and unbridled skill. The harmonies weave in and out, punctuating words and phrases within the verses and that amazing chorus to give Don't Let Go this vibe of feeling cool forever. Number 14, The Chain, Fleetwood Mac. The sound of romantic fracture and emotional turmoil reverberates throughout this 1997 banger from Fleetwood Mac. The group's Rumors LP was the soundtrack to multiple relationships within the band falling apart, and that pain is laid bare on the chain. Break the silence, damn the dark, damn the, light. the vocals of Stevie Nicks, Lindsey Buckingham, and Christine McVie weave together like strings on some arcane musical loom, crafting stardust magic with every harmony. The determined quarter-note rhythm of the verses builds to a final bass-driven crescendo. It's here where the chain enters Hall of Fame territory, as Fleetwood Mac serves up ghostly harmonies for love's bittersweet farewell. Chain, hey, hey, Number 13, Bohemian Rhapsody, Queen. Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. If there's one obvious entry on this list, Perhaps it's this one. Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen just feels like one of those slam-dunk examples of the vocal harmony as high art. It's there right from the jump, as Freddie Mercury and the boys declare their statement of musical intent. All of the members from Queen could sing, so here on Bohemian Rhapsody, they do just that, and make musical history in the process. Each movement of the song ushers in a new opportunity for the members of Queen to show off their chops. From that aforementioned intro to the moody verses to that fiery hard rock finale, it's all here in gloriously overblown bombast. Has a devil put aside for me. Number 12, Rainy Days and Mondays, The Carpenters. Run and find the one who loves me. Soft rock isn't an insult, at least not when it comes to the Carpenters. This sibling duo helped define 1970s pop radio, but don't think for a second that this diminishes the talents of Karen and Richard Carpenter. No need to talk it out. We know what it's all about. Rainy Days and Mondays was written by the legendary Paul Williams and Roger Nichols, and features Wrecking Crew recording alum Hal Blaine on the drums. Karen herself was an accomplished percussionist, but it's her vocals that embrace the listener like the warmest, most comforting sweater. Richard's harmonies and electric piano playing never overshadow his sister's magnificent lead vocal, yet their combined talents turn Rainy Days and Mondays into a mood. Full stop. Rainy Days and Mondays always give me day. Number 11, To Love Somebody, The Bee Gees. The Bee Gees may be more closely associated with 1970s disco, but their early work feels far more indebted to the psychedelic pop and rock from the 1960s. To Love Somebody arrives straight from this underrated period in the group's history, yet fans can hear that trademarked Bee Gees vocal talent even at this early stage. Somebody. The Baroque pop musical arrangements are evocative as hell, feeling much more like the Beatles than Saturday Night Fever. This is no slight to either period, but it's refreshing to hear the Gibbs siblings harmonize in this more rock-focused fashion. Their work on that chorus in particular flutters and soars like a robin. It's magical stuff. To love somebody the way I love you. 
Number 10. You've Lost That Love and Feeling – The Righteous Brothers What constitutes a perfect vocal harmony? They're everywhere in music, but the best ones reach out, grab our hearts, and make us feel something. We had a love, a love, a love you don't find every day. Call it the chills, nostalgia, or simply that love and feeling, but we know it when we hear it. The Righteous Brothers work perfectly off each other here on 1964's You've Lost That Love and Feeling, while Phil Spector's Wall of Sound production amplifies everything to evoke a certain time and place. Medley's lead baritone vocal sets everything up before Bobby Hatfield hits the high harmony for the chorus. Hatfield also delivers some banger high notes near the song's tail end. But it's all about that chorus, man. Number 9. Be My Baby – The Ronettes We're sticking with the Phil Spector Wall of Sound style here once again for our next entry, an absolute classic slice of early 60s pop. Ronnie Spector, then under the name Veronica Bennett, is actually the only member of the Ronettes to sing on the track, overdubbing all of the backing harmonies that lift up her soaring vibrato. sweetly sung backing oohs and ahs that make Bennett's already powerful work on the chorus feel truly iconic. The end result evoke those nostalgic, slightly sad memories that make Be My Baby tug at so many heartstrings. <laughs> Number 8. Turn, Turn, Turn – The Birds Do everything turn, turn, turn. The Birds may not have written Turn, Turn, Turn. That honor belongs to folk singer Pete Seeger, but it's their version that's arguably gone down as the most well-known. It also doesn't feel unfair to surmise that the band's amazing harmony vocal work helped make their take on Turn, Turn, Turn feel so indicative of the 1960s. Roger McGuinn takes the lead, while David Crosby and Gene Clark assist on harmony vocals, and it's truly the stuff of magic. It's still folky, sure, but there's also a rock backbeat, and a proto-psychedelia that would define the bird's musical direction into the future. The vocals are insistent and captivating, possessing this glorious echo that makes Turn 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 feel and sound like no other song from the era. Number 7. God Only Knows – The Beach Boys One does not simply discuss rock vocal harmonies without praying at the altar of the Beach Boys. It doesn't matter if we're listening to the old-school surf rock fun of I Get Around or our number 7 entry God Only Knows. The Beach Boys are absolute masters of their craft. You never need to doubt it. I'll make you so sure about it. A bevy of instruments were laid down in the studio for this latter song, including everything from sleigh bells and clarinets to everyday kitchen cups. At the end of the day, however, it's all about how Brian Wilson and Bruce Johnston harmonize Carl Wilson's soaring lead vocal. This is a tender yet deceptively complex song with devastating arrangements and the kind of vocal performances that make the goosebumps rise and the hair stand on end. Number 6. Because – The Beatles because the world is round, it turns me The Beatles were another band whose career trajectory saw them embracing some of the most forward-thinking vocal arrangements to go along with their influential songwriting talents. Because, from 1969, could not sound further removed from the band's early pop hits, but instead feels more at home with late-period gems like Eleanor Rigby and While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Ah, love is old, love is new. The direct inspiration from Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata lends Because a gothic and grandiose atmosphere, like something out of the Castlevania franchise. 
elsewhere. The Moog synthesizer and electric harpsichord underline those haunting vocal harmonies that stress that aforementioned melody lift from Beethoven. It's brilliant stuff. It makes me cry. Number five, thank you for the music, ABBA. But I have a talent, a wonderful thing, cause everyone listens when I start to sing. The opening of Thank You for the Music by ABBA sounds like a Broadway show tune, which is fitting because it would later be used in Mamma Mia. There's a grand cabaret style to this track that's not quite the disco for which ABBA was largely known, but more of a sweeping pop ballad with great vocal harmonies. What will I be? The group had already proved they could deliver some amazing harmonies on songs like Knowing Me, Knowing You, and Thank You for the Music underlines this fact in a great way. The chorus sounds particularly massive, as Agneta Feldskog handles the lead, while Anifried Linkstad and the other backing vocals echo Feldskog in fantastic fashion. So I say thank you for the music, for giving it to me. Number 4. The Sound of Silence, Simon and Garfunkel. No one did disturb the sound of silence. It seems difficult to believe that the debut album from Simon and Garfunkel, featuring the original version of The Sound of Silence, failed to make an impact back in 1964. Yet if that hadn't happened, then perhaps we'd never have this 1965 remix to enjoy. A take many feel is the definitive version of the song. Hear my words that I might teach you. Take my arms that I might reach you. The electrified instrumentation doesn't hamper the folk duo's amazing harmony vocals. If anything, they amplify how the Sound of Silence resounds as a defining song of the 1960s, an evocative tune where Simon and Garfunkel become, almost in an instant, icons of their generation. This reputation would be further cemented on tearjerkers like 1970s Bridge Over Troubled Water. I'm right Number 3. Seven Bridges Road, The Eagles Stars in the southern sky the dude may hate the Eagles, but even he probably couldn't deny the vocal harmonies present on their version of Steve Young's Seven Bridges Road. Or maybe we better address the elephant in the room by calling it Ian Matthews' arrangement of Seven Bridges Road that was allegedly heisted by the Eagles for their 1980 hit. And I had you in the same way. It doesn't matter on which side of the argument you lay because there's no denying that this live track really captures how well the band harmonized out on stage. The quintuple harmony in particular is incredible to behold, creating a moment of musical history that's difficult to beat. The control and attention to detail is just astounding. Down the seven bridges Number 2. California Dreamin', The Mamas and the Papas All the leaves are brown, the leaves are brown, and the sky is gray. The musical climate of the 1960s was one that supported huge growth, from West Coast folk and psych rock to psychedelia and British invasion imports. The Mamas and the Papas were from the former camp, and their hit California Dreamin' is perhaps the song that could serve as a time capsule relic from this very important decade. The lead vocal by Denny Doherty, as well as the harmonies by John and Michelle Phillips with Cass Elliot, were actually laid over instrumentation by the Barry McGuire version of the song. Yet it's the Mamas and the Papas' warm harmonies, together with a ghostly improvised flute solo by Bud Shank, that makes California Dreamin' one for the ages. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. All I Have to Do Is Dream The Everly Brothers I need you so that I could die. 
What is it about pop hits from the 1950s that make us cry every single time? There's an innocence and nostalgia associated with songs like All I Have to Do is Dream that makes the listener yearn for a time and place that may or may not exist. The harmonies of the Everly Brothers on here are bittersweet and slightly melancholic. Only trouble is, gee whiz, I'm dreaming my life. Their voices evoke imagery so closely associated with this decade. Sharing milkshakes, young sweethearts holding hands at the drive-in, and those same sweethearts dancing close to this song. The Everly Brothers captured lightning in a bottle with All I Have to Do is Dream, their harmonious voices achieving not only Billboard chart success, but musical immortality. What vocal harmonies tug at your heartstrings? Let us know in the comments. She once was a true Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.